In this video, we're going to discuss and prove the law of cosines, which is a very, very useful formula, uh, or identity, that describes the relationship between an angle, theta, of a triangle and its adjacent sides, which we'll call a and b. This is the formula. We're going to use the uh, coordinate plane in the proof. And here is an example of what triangle we're talking about. So for instance, we have the sides a, b, and c, and the angle theta between those two sides. And in proofs like this, it's useful to um, use the coordinate plane to prove certain things about this figure. But before we do that, it's a good idea to simplify the problem by making one of the sides parallel to either the x or the y axis. In this case, we're going to rotate it so that a is parallel to the x axis, like so. And just to clean it up a bit, we're going to redraw, redraw it with the letters in the proper way. So you can see A is exactly on uh, the x-axis. And look at this. Um, you see that theta looks exactly like an angle in the unit circle. And in fact, you can make a version of this proof, like you see on the right over here, that has the angle on the outside of uh, angles A and B. In other words, it doesn't even have to be an angle between 0 and 180 for this to work, as long as it's an angle um, between two uh, sides of a triangle. But for this proof, I decided to focus on it being an angle between the two sides uh, within the triangle because that's really um, how most people intuitively understand it and it's what it's most useful for um, in practical situations. So um, we're going to get rid of that for now and we have to find out certain information about this triangle if we're going to make a statement that includes both A, B, C, and theta. So first thing we're going to do is try to find out certain points of this triangle. So what's that point over there? Well that's pretty simple because um, we already saved ourselves the work of finding it, uh, we already know it's a zero because a is how far it is on the x-axis. And just another point, um, a, b, and c are the names of these sides, but they're also the lengths of these sides, clearly, in order for this to make sense. Um, and now we find the other point over here, which is more difficult to find, and uh, we draw those dotted lines uh, in order to make it have a little more sense. Um, and basically we have this triangle on the bottom over here. If we find x and y, we find the x and the y coordinates of that point. In order to do that, we need to use basic trigonometry. By definition, cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the opposite side, or x over b. And by multiplying both sides by b, we have x is equal to b cosine theta. Similarly, sine theta is defined as the opposite over the hypotenuse, or y over b. And by multiplying both sides by b, we have y is equal to b sine theta. Therefore, that point that we're looking for is b cosine theta, b sine theta. Um, we found it using that triangle below. We're going to do a brief transition to, um, we're going to clean up a bit, push it to the left, but everything on your screen is the same as it was before. And we're going to reveal our big strategy for finding out the law of cosines, which is finding the length of c. By doing that, we'll create a formula that involves a, b, c, and theta in one big old thing. So the first thing we do is we write the distance formula, which means we have two points. Let's find out the distance between them. And we have the difference in the x values squared um, plus the difference in the y values squared and all of that uh, under one big square root. Um, and so from there, we can distribute or multiply out those squared terms and we get square root of b squared cosine squared theta minus 2ab cosine theta plus a squared plus b squared sine theta. And uh, we could rearrange these terms so that both of those b squared terms come together. In other words, at the very beginning, we have b squared cosine squared theta plus b squared sine theta. Why do we do that? So we can factor out the b squared. We have at the beginning b squared, open parentheses, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, close parentheses, and then all the stuff that we had before. Now, where do we know cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta? Well, it's a Pythagorean identity. It's always going to be equal to 1. So that transforms into 1. So we have b squared times 1, minus, which is obviously going to be b squared, minus 2ab cosine theta plus a squared. And finally, by rearranging the terms, we have a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. The entire the square root of that whole big thing is equal to c. And from there, we have just one more step which is to square c and to square what c is equal to all at the end of all these calculations. So we have c squared is equal to the square of what's in the square root sign or just a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. So how did we do this proof? Well, we drew the triangle. 
We made it simpler by having one side rest on the x-axis, found two points, and found the length of C. And by finding the length of C, we were able to create one big formula where all of the important letters and uh, theta were, were used, all the important variables. And so this is the law of cosines. Whenever you have a triangle, you'll be able to find out what the angle is between two of the sides. Or if you have an angle uh, and two of the sides, you might be able to find out um, what the third side is, depending on um, where exactly the angle is and which sides you know. But it's a very uh, useful formula, and hopefully this proof showed you, gave you some intuition about why it, why it holds.